Hello and welcome everyone. I'm Sajid, the CTO of Rain Lab Technologies, and I'm here to take you through the product walkthrough of our product, Rain Ice. So, uh, Rain Labs, as you would probably have uh, guessed by now, um, we are into the business of developing digital and uh, cyber physical laboratories. So, uh, Rain Ice is our first offering. ICE stands for Internal Combustion Engines. So, uh, Rain Ice is a product where we have converted a physical engine test cell into a cyber physical system. So, the physical part here, um, since you're probably going to be accessing it through uh, a web page, you don't have a physical uh, aspect here. But um, we do have ways of uh, providing you with the physical interface. So, what it means is that we can sell a kit to you. You can assemble the kit and you can start tuning on the kit and uh, the web page would give you um, the dials that you see you would be seeing that from the web page so um, that is what we mean we mean by a cyber physical system so now let me quickly get into uh, how you could uh, use rain ice and uh, learn quite a lot of interesting things from here so um, the whole product it's divided into uh, two portions okay so the first one uh, is the dyno portion and the second one is the ECU portion. So what you see here, all these dials, the sliders and all, these are all the dyno portion. So this is where you control the dyno. So you could ask the dyno to set a certain engine RPM. Okay? And once you've set a certain engine RPM, you can increase the throttle to how much ever you want. So the, the dyno would make sure the engine RPM does not increase beyond that it will automatically apply your load. So this way of operating it, this is called as your steady state operation. So I can set say 2000, engine, 2000 RPM, okay? And uh, now the engine RPM is 2000. So I can increase my throttle. So whatever uh, throttle portion I increase it to, um, my engine RPM will not change. So if you can notice here the engine RPM, this does not change. So what uh, is happening is my uh, dyno is able to increase the load on the engine so that it keeps the engine working at just that particular RPM. Okay, so no matter what uh, RPM I increase, the RPM, I mean the throttle I increase, the RPM remains the same. So this is the steady state operation condition. So uh, the next portion um, is with your uh, dyno outputs. So we can measure the brake torque we are getting about 9.1 newton meters of torque and uh, around 2.86 uh, i think horsepower it shouldn't be kilowatts it should be horsepower uh, it shows 2.86 horsepower okay and apart from it you also have some emission figures co hc nox so um, these are not very uh, you know uh, the, the whatever thermal efficiencies the emissions they're not very accurate but you do get an idea, okay? So if I'm running it at 50% throttle at 3000 RPM, then on a maximum whatever scale you can have, you have HC of about 35, I mean 75 percentage, okay? NOx is really, really high, probably for whatever um, values that we are running at this particular point, okay? And uh, if this light comes on, it means that the engine is knocking, okay? So this is the knock monitor. So this is with um, your your dyno uh, side of things and sometimes um, usually like whenever you change some input um, the dyno should respond with with the torque corresponding torque output um, but for some reason if this doesn't happen if you're not able to uh, um, get values here then you can click this run test and manually force the dyno to take values from here and uh, figure out what is going to be your test outputs okay so this is the dyno portion and uh, this I said is the steady state. Now going here to the sweep test, this is where you can do some um, transient testings. So uh, you can kind of uh, name the test conditions, let me say test 1, okay, um, 1000 to 10,000 RPM. This engine has an upper limit of 10,000 RPM, so these are the default values which you have here and you can decide what throttle you're going to be running this at. So now let's say I'm running it at 100% throttle and uh, I need to figure out if I change my, uh, you know, um, spark advances, how does my torque change? So I run the test once, okay, 
and uh, I run the test twice. I mean, um, I know it doesn't make sense, but this is how the product is built. So suppose if you want to compare two different values, okay? So I want to compare my Spark Advance versus um, BreakTorque. Okay, so I am running a constant Spark Advance of 23 degrees. Okay, and this is how my break torque has changed. Suppose I need to figure out um, how does my uh, uh, horsepower and uh, break torque, they vary. So this is how they vary. So this is your um, break uh, power is on your uh, test one. So test one, the blue one, that is your break power. And test two is going to be your um, break torque. Okay, maybe I'm not interested in that. Um, I'm, I'm more um, concerned about seeing how my NOx changes. So my NOx is really high at the initial points and then it starts coming down. I'm interested in seeing how um, HC would vary, maybe how CO would vary. So these are all the, uh, you know, the different outputs that you can get from the dyno when you're going into the transient condition. So you can either do a steady state or you can do a transient. You can also do a transient condition at 50% throttle. Okay, so now uh, I've run one test at, uh, let me call it um, 50, yeah, 50 percent, okay. So now I've run one test at uh, um, 100 percent throttle. Now I'm running another test at 50 percent throttle. So um, suppose I, I don't want test one, I want only test two and test three. And test two is brake torque, test three is also brake torque. So I'm trying to do the test one is with 100% uh, 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 throttle open. And this is with 50% throttle open. So you see the, uh, the the amount of torque you produce is kind of the same, but um, where you produce the torque has changed. Okay, so this basically means your uh, engine is more efficient at uh, 4,000 RPM when you open just 50% throttle, whereas the engine is more efficient at um, 7,000 RPM when you open full throttle. So this, this is basically how you do your, your steady state conditions. Now let me go back, I mean uh, transient conditions. Now let me go back to the steady state and go to the second part of the uh, RAINIS which is the ECU. So um, this is where you have the ECU interface, right? So you have your spark table and uh, you have your air fuel ratio table. So you can just go here and you can tune this similar to how you would tune your regular ECU. So you have seen, uh, you would have probably seen how ECUs are tuned. So now uh, these figures here in bold, this represents your throttle position. And this uh, values on the top, uh, the x-axis, horizontal axis, that represents your engine RPM. <coughs> so similarly with uh, Spark as well. So this is your throttle and this is your RPM. And you have a nice graph here which kind of displays how your spark values are calibrated. So um, throttle versus engine RPM, how is it calibrated? Okay, so now um, there's one very weird thing going on here. It's all steps. Okay, so uh, what, what it means is that your, your, th your uh, th um, values inside, it's all like in steps, 10, 20, 30, you know, something like that. So uh, now you want to start tuning this. So when you want to start tuning it, you basically have to like, uh, say let me uh, do it at 10,000 RPM, that's where I'm going to get my maximum torque. Okay, so now um, when I come here, I find that I have a spark advance of 30 degrees and I have an air fuel ratio of 16. So I would always start with my air fuel ratios first. Okay, 10,000 RPM and 100% throttle. So 100% uh, throttle and 10,000 RPM. So this is 16. So I want to run it um, a little bit more richer, richer meaning I want to put more fuel inside. So if I want to put more fuel inside, I'll have to reduce the numbers. The maximum you can go up to is probably around uh, 12. So let me see what happens when I make this 14. Okay. So before I do that, I'm making 17.5 Newton meters of torque and 18.32 uh, HP. Okay. So now I'm going to make it 14. I've changed it to 14, but uh, it doesn't get updated when you do the ECU calibration. So I'll have to go manually run tests. Okay, 17.5 and 18.3. 
17.59 and 18.42 yes i am going somewhere i am slightly increasing my horsepower and torque and uh, i told you we could go up to maybe 12 12.5 so let me keep it at 12.5 so at the 17.59 18.42 um okay i have lost a little bit of horsepower okay that's okay um let me just try to keep it all at uh, 12.5 and then let me come to my air fuel ratio. So now you see that, I mean spark advance. You see that I'm not knocking, which means uh, I can still go ahead and increase the spark advance. So I make it 35 degrees. Okay, torque is 15, horsepower is 15, um, 40 degrees. 16.19, I think uh, 50 degrees would be the absolute maximum. Yeah, you started knocking. So if you start knocking, you can't uh, run at 50 degrees. From 40, I went to 50. I got knock. So now I'm reducing it to 45. Click somewhere and then run to 45. 45 is still knocking. 40. Yeah, there is no knock. So now maybe between 40 and 45, I can give a value 42. Knocking. Okay, I think I'll just happily stay stuck with 40. Okay, so uh, now by doing this, I've, I've got what my, um, you know, uh, maximum uh, spark advance could be for this point. I've also got the AFR's character. Okay, 12.5. So now you'll have to go back, do it entirely for 9,000, 8,000, 7. Do it until like uh, maybe 1,000, 1,000 for 100% throttle this entire area. And once you do that, you can go back into the sweep test and you can run test and find out what is the horsepower and torque of looking at. Um, suppose if it is, uh, you need to stop doing this. Okay, and uh, now that uh, my AFR table at one particular point alone uh, is 12.5. You see my graph is kind of uh, showing you that. So at just 100% uh, throttle and 10,000 RPM, you see that uh, the spark value has come down to 10,000, I mean 12.5. Okay, so 12.5 is here the dark blues and you see the dark blues. You can just about make out the dark blue here value of 12.5. So um, you can use this, uh, the uh, uh, map effectively to kind of figure out um, how does your map look? It has to be smooth. It can't be a straight line. There cannot be random ups and downs. It has to be all smooth. And uh, suppose you are you are going ahead with the session. You need to stop and you need to come back. Then what you can do is you can click download CSV. It will download download your whatever table is selected A4 or Spark into an Excel sheet. So now on the Excel sheet, um, this is your uh, ID axis. This and uh, this okay so this is your um, x-axis and this is your y-axis okay so you could um, go here you can do the tuning here now suppose I want to copy this 12.5 to uh, the entire area here I can paste it maybe not run it with bold okay uh, it might uh, screw up with uh, Things. So I say yes, save, close it, and now upload CSV. Um, it was in my uh, downloads folder, AFR. I open, and there you go. I've got 12.5 all over here. So I can save whatever tunes I've done. I can save it. I can also easily edit it, and I can re-upload it. And once I do it, now I can go and run this. So uh, I think this should be sufficient information for you to get started off. So now uh, the, the whole goal is to maximize the horsepower and torque. So um, you'll have to do it for uh, both horsepower and torque and you'll have to make sure that you are able to get the maximum horsepower and torque output, whatever is possible. Okay, And you'll have to make sure you do it at 100% throttle, not at anything less, 100% throttle. So what we have maximum achieved so far is about... Uh, 24 hours power and, and 31.5 newton meters of torque. The higher you achieve, um, at least for, for, for this exercise, the uh, better it is.
and uh, if you have any other queries you could always uh, get in touch with us over our whatsapp group so good luck get on with your tuning hope you have fun